All right. Good day, good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Lag Boimer, if it's still Lag Boimer, <laughs> wherever you are. Uh, today's Hayom Yom. Ilula de Rashbi, right? The celebration, the wedding celebration of the Rashbi. So on this day, Lag Boimer, I'm now going to read inside here. Lag Boimer was one of the Mitla Rebbe's particularly noteworthy festivals, right? The third Lubavitcher Rebbe. He and his Hasidim would go out to the fields that day. And although he did not wash and break bread, he did partake of mashka, which he was not allowed to do for health reasons. Okay? Lamayla Minateva, right? He went above reason. He went against the doctor's orders, or we'll just say higher than reason. Because he says for health reasons. But he, but he did it. He drank mashka, took mashka, said, Lahayim. And the punchline is many wonders were seen at this time, most of them regarding children. And all year long, people waited for La Agboima. So La Agboima is a special day for those who want to need a special power for children. So be it. Lessons in Tanya. There's Tanya. We're starting a new Peric. Peric Memtes 49 on page 724. And on the classical Tanya, bottom of page 136. Okay. Um, we are speaking about back to sort of the subject which we started with was God's intentionality in the creation. What was his what is his what's his purpose for this, for creating us in this seemingly rather dark world where every day something else pops up? Uh, and how did he do it? Or how does he do it? Would be better said. So we'll start in M test. Even though the details, the specificities of the concealments, the enclosements, the concealments, and the hidings of the or in so boracle of the infinite light, may it be blessed, or the infant, the light of the infinite one, may he be blessed. There's always there's two ways that this is being is touched. Uh, so the Oh, the detail, even though the specific details of this histalsalis, remember the chain of descent that's involved in creating worlds from one world to another, each world more concealment than the next, each world darker, so to speak, in terms of its inability to openly reveal godliness. So the details of this stuff of the histalshalis oilamis of the chain of descents of worlds, until the creation of this physical world, this physical world itself, in a number of many, many different, and many numerous contractions and different contractions, contractions of the tzimtzumim, the tzimtzumim, many, many tzimtzumim, as is known, as is known for, to those who have tasted from the tree of life, i.e. those who have learned some Kabbalah and Hasidus. As you learn more Hasidus, you'll, you'll know, you'll come across this notion that the four worlds that we have are just four big uh, tranches, so to speak, of worlds, but within them are worlds upon worlds upon worlds, each one of them a result of tzimtzum after tzimtzum after tzimtzum, uncountable tzimtzumim. Nevertheless, though that's true, we're going to now focus on what we usually focus on in at least Chabad Chassidus, which is the four worlds. Agdera Klal, in general, all of these minim minim shonim in in numerous numbers of tzimtzumim, em shloisha, they're generally three, three minim tzimtzumim, 
three kinds of tzimtzumim, atzumim klalim, very powerful and general tzimtzumim. And these three tzimtzumim correspond to the three general categories of worlds. As I said, each category is a generality inclusive of myriad numbers of worlds within each general, general um, structure. And in each of the klalim, the generalities of worlds, that's Bri Yitzir and Yitzir, which we're speaking about. And he says, There are tens upon tens of thousands of details. And these three general categories of worlds came Shloisha Oilamus Biyad. And the three worlds, which we call Bria, Yitzir, and Asiya. Yeah, why, why? You may, I mean, may be asking, after four worlds, we always learn about the So he, he says he covers that now. Ki olam atzilis hu elokus mamish. Olam atzilis is godliness mamish. Right? It's a different category. In, in olam atzilis, we say in, uh, in many places in Hasidus and in the Shabbos davening, in the pre-Shabbos davening, that in olam atzilis, ihu chad, he is, he is one, his name is one, that the Oris and the Kalim are one with God. In other words, in Oilam of Silas, there is, though we call it an Oilam, there's a certain degree of concealment. But, but on the other hand, there's so much revelation that the experience in Atsilas is not an experience of separation at all. Whereas in Bria, and that's why we call Bria Lushan creation, right? on Bria, that's where the real sense of separation first starts. Whereas, as he says, now Olam Atzilus is elokus mamish; it's mamish godliness. Now, in order to create the world of Bria, shehen neshamna. What's the world? What is the world of Bria? Neshamas, souls in their word, malachim el yoinim, the higher levels of world of angels. Asher avedosos avedosom lehashem, which their whole service is to Hashem. Bimin is chabad. In the level of Chabad, Hamislab Shim Bohem, which is enclosed in them. And this he doesn't really explain here, but in another place, Chabad Chagas in the He, these Chabad, right, in the, in the mind faculties, Chagas, the heart faculties, and the He, the lower body faculties, these are equated with the three worlds, Bria, Yitzhira, and Asiya. So in the Bria is associated with Chabad. And Chabad in the Slash Bahem Bahem Masigim Umakabli Mahem. And the worlds of Bria receive from Chabad, from the spirits of Chabad. So in Bria, there's some quote hasaga, there's some grasping of Elakus in the in a way that drips into the realm of what we called yesterday, the rational mind. And that and that starts from a very, very big. Utsum, very strong, very, I mean, the word here is related to essential. It means you're powerful, a very powerful tzimtzum to get from Atsilis to Bria, extremely powerful tzimtzum contraction. And the words are Hester Behelem, concealment. And then Vechein Mabrir Yatsira, and similarly from Bria to the next world, Yatsira. Ki Orma At Mizera, because it's just a very, very little bit of light. Amislabish Ba'olam Habria. Which is enclosed in Olma Bria, which goes down into Yitzira. Adayin hu mechinis ein sof legabi Olam Yitzira. In fact, that light in Bria, relative to the light of, y- of Yitzira, is ein sof, infinite, compared to the light. And this is a comparability. It isn't the or ein sof itself in its source, but in relation to Bria, what we have in the lower world of Yitzira, Bria is a infinite compared to Yitzira. And it's impossible for this light to be enclosed in the lower world. Only through contraction, the helen and concealment. And then likewise, to go from Yitzir to the next world, which is the world we live in, the world of Yitzir. He says in brackets, as is written in another place, in the explanation of these three simsumim, at length, uh, explained in another place, in order to bring this idea closer to our intellect. It's not noted here, and I haven't seen where maybe someone has the other place, other places that he mentions, but one of them that I know about, because I happen to be learning in the 
The Alter Rabbi is a Siddur Bedach. The Alter Rabbi is Siddur Ben Divrei Elokim Chayim. He goes through very much detail of the thousands, I mean, not the thousands upon thousands, but much more detail here, there than here in terms of the contractions one to another. The, you know, it's an assuming run to another. But it's spoken about at, la- at length in other places. Okay, so you could ask yourself what he's going to ask. He's what he, a question that's not, he's not going to pose the question, he's going to answer the implicit question here, which is why? Why, what's, why is God going through all this tircha, so to speak? Obviously, tircha means trouble. Obviously, it's, it's not troubling to God, but when you think about it, the analogy that we're using, here's a, you know, an Adam HaElyon, a supernal man, but even deeper than supernal man, who's, for some reason, is hiding himself, tucking himself into a corner, revealing a little bit of himself, and then littler and littler and littler until he gets down to this physical world. What's the tachlis? What's the point? So that's question, and this un, un, unspoken question he answers right now. The tachlis kol simsumin, the purpose of all these simsumin, is who? To create the physical coarse body of a human being. And that human being is placed in the world for the purpose of to subjugate the other side, the side of not Kedusha. In order to create an advantage of light which comes from darkness. And we've had this many, many times. It's, let's say it's not intuitive, it's maybe even counterintuitive, but uh, I've used and other people have used the muscle of a, of a black hole. A black hole, at least as we understand it, whether it's true or not, but science gives us to us this way, is this place where light is, is condensed, condensed and condensed and condensed into darkness. In other words, into a place where the light itself isn't revealed. If one were to reveal that light, it would be hugely more powerful than the, the, the light that entered it in the, in the first place. A muscle that I use for myself, and I'll share it with you, and I've done, I think I've said this before, the advantage of light which comes from darkness. If you'll just do, as I'm doing now, just do something, just open your eyes and look around the room you're in, the lit room, and imagine that the lights, that it's night, and the lights went out, and all the lights in the city went out. They had a blackout. So it's completely then black in your room. So the eyes have a natural tendency to search for light. So as a result of that, as, 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 as things get darker, and this you could, you could even see this when you try this, you'll see that your pupils expand. Your pupils expand in order to be able to catch some light. And if one were to flash on those lights quickly, it would be intense because the pupil is expanded so much. So that's just a, a physical muscle for the advantage, the power of light which comes from darkness. And this is what Hashem wants. He wants that the entirety of his creation should reveal a light much deeper than the light that was there at the beginning of creation. This is the advantage of light which comes from darkness. The halois, back inside, the halois saw them as the as the human being elevates himself as nefesh elokis, that here we're speaking about the Jewish human being because we're talking about that we are the, the that we are called uh, his treasured people and we are the ones who have the nefesh elokis, the godly soul. So Hashem has created this just to re, re, you know, just smooth out the, uh, the translation here. The whole purpose of all this simsum is in order to create the body of a person to subjugate the sitarachra, subjugate, of course, is one of the meanings of hod, which is today's hod shibahod, today's uh, hayom, uh, today's uh, svira, to subjugate the coarseness of things and reveal the nefesh elikis for the sake of revealing a light which is for, comes from the darkness. Ahodim, to reveal the nefesh elikis and back inside hahachiyinus, to elevate the nefesh elikis and the enlivening soul, the animal soul. We're elevating the animal. This is uh, explicated at length in all the memoriam of Svirus Omer. The Omer is barley, which is animal food, and the Koyan lifts it up. So our purpose here 
is to utilize the power of the Nefesh Elikis to elevate the animal soul. And in doing so, both souls get an elevation. And this is the mushroom we've spoken about before of the rider on the chariot. When the rider, that's the Nefesh Elikis, is guiding things and the chariot is being pulled by animals. So the animal pull it, but the animals now take the chariot and the rider to a place that the both the chariot and the rider could never get to if it weren't for the power of the animal. So the animal is enlisted in the service of God and takes the Nevesh Elokis to a level higher than it was in the first place, which is an example of transforming darkness, the darkness of nature, the darkness of the Nefesh Ativis, the animal and natural soul, and revealing the light. So the whole purpose, that's the whole purpose of the creation to subjugate the darkness and reveal, to subjugate and overturn and crack open the darkness to reveal the light which is in it, and to elevate the nefesh of the kis, v'achayunis, and the enlivening soul, ulu and all her garments, in other words, all the, all the, the, the ten garments of the, the soul, chabad, down to malchus, all get elevated. The kol choiches aguf, and to elevate all the powers of the body, that all the powers of the body should be used, kul and all of them, l'hashem levade, only to Hashem, as we've said above, Berichus at length. Kizeh Tachlis is Talchus Oilimus, because this is the whole purpose of the order of descent of the worlds, this whole Seder Hachistalchus chain of descent. In a Kamayim Aponim Laponim. Now, back to the mushal, we used a few uh, where we started this. Right? The whole mushal of the face you show to the water is the face you get back. And we started with this. This was an example, they brought an example of how to, how to um, bring forth a very, in a simple way, one's love of Hashem. By thinking about someone, if someone showed you love, and we're going to use a muscle of a king, which is God, the king of kings, shows you love and brings, him, brings you into, in, into his innermost chambers, you would be moved. You would be moved and you would be excited and you would be very grateful that he took you or me off the low life, the low life, relatively low life of this low world and brought him into his, uh, into his palace. So similarly, like water reflects the face. So So now we're going to use it, right? The way the shav you show, this is from Shlomo HaMelech. The face that's shown to the water is the face that reflects back. So Hashem, what is he, what is he showing us in doing this? He's showing us, he's pushing aside everything. He took himself, his or ain't salt, and pushed it to the side or pulled it to the side. As a way, this is a metaphor. As He took his light, his all-encompassing light, and took it to the side. Uh, his or ha-godl, his great light, ha bilti taklis which has no end. Veganzu, and he hid it. The hastiro, he conceal it, begimel minis and sumim shonim in these three enormous and multiple contractions. Uh, and he did that. He hid himself. He contracted himself. He made himself small. Oid shibahoid, right? He submitted to himself. He, he's, he's, he practiced achno, subjugation of himself. Again, achno is also hold. He subjugated himself. Why? In order for the sake of Adam, us down here below, in order to lift him, in order to create an ability in us to turn over the darkness and lift ourselves up to Hashem. And so this Hashem, he, he, in order to get to us, he has to put his allness aside and reach down with some, some kind of a tool, which is the Torah and mitzvahs, of course, and in order to lift us up. It says in the Gemara, love shrinks flesh. In other words, the Amashal, if you're in New York, if you're on a subway, and you get on, and there's not much seat, but someone moves over and makes himself narrow because he wants to do a kindness to you. So love shrinks flesh. And God shrunk himself to make room for us to sit, on, to sit next to him, so to speak. So how much more so? And doubled and redoubled in case without end. If he did this for us, how much incredibly more is it for us to put ourselves aside? 
Lehaniach, to put ourselves aside, Laazif, call Ashile, and abandon everything which is self centered and self interested, Menefesh Ba'ad Bosser, from soulful things to fleshly things, Lahafkir are called Bishvil Udavki Bayez Bora, and to make Hefkir free everything for the sake of clinging to Hashem Yez Bora, Bidaveka Bechashecha Bechafetza, with clinging, with desire, with yearning. And nothing should interfere. Nothing interfered with him doing this, and he's doing it for our sake. So why don't we do it? Make ourselves small. Again, subjugate oneself. Admit the, that the, the greatness is as, just to simply admit that, the, that he who is so great has come so close to us for the sake of lifting us up. So let's make ourselves into the kind of vessel that, that can be open to being lifted up. And put ourselves aside and put everything aside. From literally from the house and from outside. And then from the house is the stuff that belongs to you, which is the goof, your body, and the nefesh, the, uh, the goof of the Lord, uh, neither, neither your body nor your soul, or your outside things like neither and your money, and your and your wife and your family. All of those things you should figure out. I figure out this is not a contemplative activity. This is just do it. Take all, everything you have your body, your soul, your family, your money and align it with and make it small. Make it small so that it can accept and become one with the godly light which has been emanating down here for this purpose. And that's today's Tanya. I get wiped out doing this, let me tell you. It's so powerful. Yeah. Anyway. Comments, questions? Yes, who does go? Avi, could you explain about Omar and the animal and the sacrifice, how it's bringing it up on elevations? <laughs> Could you just reiterate uh, that? I, I could read it. It's a, that's a whole story. Um, when the Omer, this, you know, this this offering is just, virtually all of our holidays have to do with harvest times and planting times. It's we were an agricultural uh, culture, and so the barley was ready to be harvested, and the barley is a, a food for an animal. So th this was one of the offerings that was in the temple. The, the Kayan took a measure of barley and the sheep also, a young sheep, but he took him a very, you know, I think it was less than one years old, one year old or up to one. Somebody can correct me, I could be wrong. Uh, and, he, and there was a, a ceremony in the, in the Beis HaMektish where this was waved. And it was waved in all eight directions, the same that you do with a lula, north, south, right. east, and west, up and down, in order that the spirit of animal, the spirit of animal should be elevated up, the power of the animal. And the mushal that's given in the Gomorrah for this is Roiv Tavua Bakoyach Shor. Roiv Tavua Bakoyach Shor. You get a lot of produce from the power of an animal. So this is the season. This is the season. And that's why we have, we're counting all these 49 days. You'll notice that each one is a different mida to take the mida, the attributes of our soul, and particularly our animal soul, and in, in, uh, envelop it with the holiness of, that's being directed downward to the animal, to the animal soul, and to the animal kingdom, and to the vegetative kingdom to grow and grow and lift ourselves up to Hashem. And that's the avoid of uh, svir, of Svira Sa'oyma and raising the Oyma. So today is Hod Shebahod, right? Today is Hod Shebahod, yeah. Go ahead. So I, I, go ahead. What, go ahead. Go so, with it. No, no, you go with it. Go, oh, me go with it. Okay. I mean, I do this every day, you know, and I hope you guys, not hope, I, I mean, I've given you the opportunity. It's up to you to do it. With yeah, this yeah. chart. I do this every day. I, I look at it. So I've looked at it uh, this morning. And one definition of, of Hod is submission. Right, and, and another, the other is gratefulness. Well, one other, one other is gratitude. And there's a key here. 
Submission brings to gratitude. If you'll just give yourself over and stop fighting it and wishing that it were different and just realize in your, in your depth of soul that this is all God and that you have food, right? Everyone here sitting here is in some relatively comfortable place. Be grateful for what you have and have our monas on those who don't, but be grateful. Just be open to and look around and feel your relative health and feel your relative uh, sustenance. And instead of being full of, of it, of the good stuff in, in a sense of self-centeredness, be very grateful for it. Um, um, Avi, I want to ask you a question. Yeah. The, um, oh, I, what, I have a question. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, what we just, uh, you know, the different levels that, you know, um, the can it be seen also as birth, giving when, when an, an shama comes, you know, down and then is born or not? Or, and also the vi vice versa, that it, death. I'm not following it. Different levels of birth, different levels of death. I'm not following it. What do you mean? Can you, can you see also that levels that a, a neshama before it's born is coming from Atsilos and then going down and to the lowest level. Well, certainly birth, the birth metaphor is good because, well, as we all know, birthing involves contractions, right? Each and every one of them getting closer to some revelation. The purpose of all these contractions is for the sake of revelation. So there's a close metaphor. The other way around, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Maybe someone else can. I heard a great uh, cheer by Akiva Tatz once. He said that before a baby is born, that it looks like it's dying, that the change in the cardiac and the respiratory circulation, one would think that the baby is dying. And yet what happens is you get a whole new birth from it. So I thought that was kind of a good Okay. Good example. Okay, Eli thank you. Elisheva, I don't know if that helps. Um, um, well, I'm just saying that with the neshama coming from a high place and then coming down and, you know, being in a body. That's that's like a birth, right? Through contractions. But you asked about the other side, about dying. But he was also and, saying that birth is like death, that it's like... Um, birth is like dying. It is, mm -hmm. because the, uh, the illumination gets smaller and smaller, doesn't it? So you, you die. You're forced to live, because it's a, very, it's a much smaller state of consciousness that you really do not want to enter uh, than the consciousness you had above. You know? And I think the idea is, is that death is the same thing. Death is, is probably a rebirth in some level. Death is a release from the confines right. of down here below, and a rebirth and an opening up, absolutely. Yehudas, you're on. Thank you. Are you um, still on? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, first of all, thank you, because every time I came upon this expression, love shrinks the flesh, love impels the flesh, all these years of learning, Tanya, I never got it, and you explained it so well today, because, and you know, it, it feels counterintuitive because when you love you 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 feel expansive you want to give you want to you, right. you grow because you you know love is an expansive um, meetup yes. but here it's so beautiful and it coincides so nicely with with log bomera this the idea of hode is also humility like the the ultimate right. humility to shrink yourself so much so that you make space for the other beautiful love the you know good real love is putting yourself aside for somebody else yeah that's shrinking the flesh good beautiful uh rifka your hand up hi thank you uh first of all um happy lagba omer from uh and uh want to say that this is a uh, behold is the the rashbi's day and um, the, the, the be beautiful explanation on the Tanya today. 
about um, our purpose in the world and the Rashmi served his purpose and we should emulate him and try and dedicate ourselves the way he dedicated himself to the, the, sure. the Torah and the sacred of the Torah. And uh, it's been a beautiful, beautiful um, 24, it's not quite 24 hours yet, but no, it's 24 hours since I was a, been at the Raspi and about half of that time. So it's been very Amen. nice. And I mentioned all of you there, keeping you in Amen. mind and thanking, thanking you for, for the learning we do together. So, thank you, Rivka. Uh, thank you special, so much. Special time. Beautiful. Thank you. We have our, we're having now our own personal bonfire in our own thank you. Uh, barbecue, but, but at the, at the, at the road, it was, uh, it was, it was a very, very well organized, very beautiful event. It's still going on. And uh, God willing, anytime someone wants to come, you can come to, to me and we walk over from here. So you don't even need a ticket or a bus. So. Thank you. So what? What's we're going to do? What's different? What makes today different than all other days? Be grateful for everything. Grateful. Be grateful for everything. Right. Recognize it all comes from Hashem. It all comes from Hashem. Yeah, Anybody make else? space Make space for God in your life. Make space for God in your um, life. As, as he's made space in his exactly. life. Exactly. This, this is a weird one. Man, a muscle, Beautiful. Right? He, he put himself aside for us. He yeah, shrunk yeah, his, good. yeah, shrunk himself down so that we could sit next to him. Okay. A wonderful lag boy. It should be healing. It should be birthing. Amen. All blessings. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen. Amen. Bye -bye. Amen. Amen.